Okay, now what I'm going to do is a slightly more complicated potential problem. And this is not any more complicated if we just use integrating the E field. Uh, and that's what I'm going to do first. It's more complicated than it was before if you do superposition, but I want to demonstrate that there is the ability to use superposition, but it makes it a little more difficult than it ordinarily would be. Okay, I'm repeating myself, so it's time to move on. Okay, so I'm going to do this by just integrating the E field and just sort of observing from the outside in. I'm coming in from infinity. Now this is a conductive shell, and I did, previously I did it with a non-conductive. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it with a conductive sphere inside. So they're both conductive, charge Q, charge capital Q, A, B, C. So this is not an infinite, infinitesimally thin uh, shell at the outside and it causes some issues. So let's go first with integrating for me. I'm going to go outside in. So R is greater than C. We can treat it as a point charge. The potential is K times Q plus Q divided by R. Piece of cake, right? Now as we get in there, R gets smaller and smaller until it's finally equal to C, right? C is that outer radius. So at R equals C, V equals K, Q plus Q over C. And it seems trivial to do that, but it helps us on the next part. And that's this. When we are inside that second sphere uh, shell, that we're inside that shell there, the electric field in there is zero. But we started, we did so much work to get here, so the voltage has a certain amount that we don't just erase because the electric field is zero. So what happens is it ends up being K times Q plus Q, in other words, what it was at the outside rim, plus integral of zero dr, which just ends up being zero. So that's our voltage inside that conductor. Then it gets a little tri uh, trickier inside. Not, not too bad, though. So A less than R less than B the voltage is going to be whatever, again, whatever the voltage was at B, which is just this, plus negative integral of E dr. I've been saying E dot dr, but the negative takes care of this. Um, so that ends up with V equals K Q plus Q over C plus integral, and we're going from B to R, of K Q divided by R squared dr. I'm sorry, I got my negatives there. Okay, let me reposition the paper very quickly. And we can go. I think that's level. Okay. So this voltage is going to be K times Q plus Q over C minus, when you integrate this, you get KQ over R with a negative in front. So it ends up being plus KQ over R evaluated at R minus KQ evaluated at B. And that's your uh, inside that gap there. Then, let me do it, R equals a, once we get in there, we're going to need this. The voltage right at that surface, we just make that A. Okay. And indeed, inside, it's also true for R less than A, because there's no electric field, excuse me, there's no electric field in that, in that inner shell, let me redraw it down here. There's no electric field inside that inner shell because it's a conductor. So this just ends up being the exact same voltage. Okay, now we're going to do it with superposition. And here's the problem with superposition. Ordinarily I'd look at this and I'd say, oh okay, well I'll ignore the shell and I'll figure out what the uh, voltages at any of those areas, what the potential is at any of those areas, any of those regions, by just thinking about that inner sphere. Then I'll block that out and I'll think of what, it's, what the, the uh, potential is at any of those regions just due to the, the uh, shell. 
then I'd add them together. The problem is this. When you put, and let me draw this bigger. Okay, if I have a conductive shell with a charge Q, it would, all the charge would reside around the outer area, around the outer layer, the outer surface. Once you put a charge inside that shell, you remember that there can be no E field anywhere in the shell. And by Gauss's law, integral of E dot dA equals Q enclosed over epsilon zero. Well, if there's no E field, that means there can be no Q enclosed. Well, and I'm, again, I'm just drawing sections of this. If there's Q here, that means for there to be no Q enclosed, you have to have a negative Q all along that inner surface. Okay? Well, if we use superposition for the voltage, when we do this, when we ignore that sphere on the inside, we have to assume this charge distribution on the shell, if that makes sense. In other words, even though we're ignoring the voltage impact of the, of the sphere, we still have to look at the charge distribution that happens on that shell when we look at the shell only. It may be more confusing than you want to deal with, but I just want to show that this comes out the same. Okay, so just sphere. If I ignore the shell, then the voltage let me do it for all regions. For R greater than C, V equals K little q over R. For B less than R less than C, it's still KQ over R. For uh, A less than R less than B, it's still KQ over R. Again, we're just talking about that shell, th uh, that sphere there. And then finally, for R less than A, it's going to be the same as, the, remember the voltage KQ over R, when you get into A, that R would be equal to A, and then it stops changing because there's no electric field in there, so it just ends up being KQ over A. Now let's do shell, just the shell. And I hope I've left myself some room. And I don't think I've left myself enough, but we'll, we'll see. We're going to be optimistic. So at R greater than C, the voltage is just K big Q over R. And that big Q, remember the outer surface has K plus Q plus little Q, inner surface has negative Q, so that charge still is only Q. Okay. Uh, when you get to um, when you get to B less than R less than C, the voltage is going to be K, Q, plus R, but at that point, C, it's just this. Okay, I started to misspeak when I did this, so I'm jumping back to here. So inside, you've got this K, Q over C. That's just what the value of the potential is right at that surface. Again, if we're only dealing with that little shell. Then we've got to integrate. And the electric field in here, the way it's shown, again, just because we have to consider the shell charge distribution that would be in the presence of that sphere, even though we're not considering the voltage or the potential from the sphere. So now when we come in here, there is an electric field, and that electric field is caused by that negative Q that's inside, that's at the inner surface. So we have to do integral, let me just write that up here, minus integral of E dot dr, the E field is just K times negative Q over R squared, so this just ends up being um, k little q over r, but we're evaluating that between, uh, I'm sorry, k negative q over r, and we're evaluating that from c up to r. And so we end up having k little q c. Okay, in other words, all I did was evaluate this from C to R. And it's the same derivation that you've seen a million times, except there's this negative. It's got a negative Q charge. That's where the signs come from. And I'm waving my hands at this a little bit because I'm trying to get at the bigger point here rather than get lost in the integrations. Okay, and then inside, it just ends up being 
the same thing but evaluated at B now. When you came in here, it has a certain charge. I mean, a certain voltage, certain potential. So that's what you have right there. Um, and then, of course, anywhere inside there, it's the exact same thing. Minus K Q over B plus K Q over C. Okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this paper up a tiny bit. And I am going to add those guys together. So my total... Okay, for R greater than C, I actually have to slide it a little bit at a time. For R greater than C, the voltage is going to be the sum of these two guys. And if we add this and this together, we get K, Q plus Q over R. For R, excuse me, B less than R less than C, we add these two together. And what you have there is a KQ over R and a minus kq over r, those two tri cancel, and you add these two together, and you have, what do you have? kq plus q over c. And then finally, what happens when you get them in, I shouldn't say finally, a less than r less than b, you get v equals, and I'm just adding these guys together here, and I have, let me combine these two terms, K, Q plus Q over C, plus KQ over R, minus KQ over B. And let me make sure I've got my Qs right. That's right, they're all little there. And then finally at R less than A, potential, which is what we're also calling the voltage, K, Q plus Q over C, plus KQ over a minus KQ over B. Okay, let's go back and let's see how that compares to what we just did. Okay, here are my results from before. So at R greater than C, K, Q plus Q over R, check. Oops, check. At B less than R that less than C, K, Q plus Q over C, check. And then at A less than R less than B, KQ plus Q over C, plus KQ over R minus KQ over B. And that's what we get there. And again, this was done by integration. And then this one, again, by superposition, R less than A, KQ plus Q over C, plus KQ over A, plus K, minus KQ over B. There it is. And so you can do this with superposition, but you absolutely have to make sure you pay attention to the fact that the conductive shell is going to have a redistribution of charges. When you consider the potential only due to the shell, you have to assume that the shell has that distribution of charges.